So let's quickly talk about mindful communication because this is something we have to be very, very cautious about. It will make a large difference. The way you communicate with your child will can be a game changer, big time game changer. First one, nonverbal communication. So nonverbal communication doesn't mean that we are not using words, but nonverbal communication means that there is a big part of you know, of the communication system, which is apart from speech, which we generally do not use in our everyday communication with our children. So we need to emphasize upon this, that we use a lot of gestures, expressions, tones. In fact, this is one of the stage one child objectives that, you know, child should start understanding parents' prosodies, the gestures, the expressions, the sounds should be understood by the child. That is one of the stage one goals. So please don't think that nonverbal communication means we cannot use speech. It means that we also need to up our game on our different styles of communication. Second, use more words than sentences. In general, it is important. Again, it diff differs for every child. But in general, the thumb rule should be that we use smaller sentences, lesser words. You know, the, the peace in the house is maintained. When we talk less, it is better. Voice modulation. You know, Shilpa gave a good example of that. She did quite a bit of voice modulation in the activities. Array, we have to finish and then we can go. So all these are voice modulations. Very important. If we do a little bit of voice modulation, you will see the impact of what you just said would be different. 45 second wait rule. Very well pointed out by uh, Pali that, you know, in general, when you're beginning on the RDI journey, keep it a rule. It's a good thing to start because you practice quite a bit with that. So when I was with Dr. Shini, she would always point that out that, you know, Harsh over here, you know, you, you, you spoke a little too fast, a little too early. Now, the benefit of a 45 second wait rule is not just that we tend to talk less in the activity but sometimes what happens is that when we wait when we wait for those 45 seconds we realize that the child has heard and the child has responded in shilpa's video there was a place where you know uh, ved probably went somewhere but was not uh, doing the activity shilpa could have spoken then and there that ved come back but she waited and because she waited, we automatically came back. So she saved herself from one instruction. So it is good habit to wait because sometimes children do come back. We just get a little too hurried and we, you know, uh, start saying, come, 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 let's do it. Come, 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 let's do it. So that is something we could always avoid. Declarative statements. I might cover a little bit more about declaratives in uh, the future workshops. But just understand something about declaratives. Anything which you do not say to the child and you are saying to your own self or to the universe will fall under the bracket of declarative language. You know, one of those examples, you know, I, I got from one of the parents is that, you know, like how, you know, uh, uh, mother-in-law will talk to the daughter a little bit about that. Ki, you know, aaj, pata nahi, aaj khana nahi tha. But, uh, something which is very indirect when you're talking to the universe, but the child is hearing. That will fall under the ambit of declaratives. I will share with you guys, uh, if I have not already, I will share with you guys a cheat sheet and a blog on that. Just go through that a little bit and you'll get an understanding. Most likely, once I start getting videos of elaborate activities where there is a need to talk more, we will see what we have talked. And through those examples, I will unfold declaratives more. Reduce questions while building regulation. This is absolutely important. I have seen this week as well in videos. I have, I mean, this is something which is very common that we tend to become teachers wherever possible, we have to really reduce that. You know, we can only be teachers when we are sitting for academics. 
that time also i don't prefer being a teacher be a guide but otherwise all the times you can just be guides you can always spotlight the things which you want your child to look at or understand but teaching generally doesn't work and when you are building regulation when you are doing jnds when you are doing patterns in that there is absolutely no need to bring in questions you know if you are playing xylophone there is no need to ask what color is this because right now that is not the objective so don't mix the objectives when you are in a mindful communication state you just focus on what the goal is of this activity why you are right now engaged with the child just focus upon that one goal finish that come out don't mix goals that you know while doing this let me just teach colors doesn't work